everybody, and welcome back to Body Slam the Competition. Thanks for joining us this week. My name is uh, Chris Adams, your host, and as always, Mike Currents, the co-host. Mike, thank you for being here with us this week. Oh, every week, Chris, you know it. See, Mike's not going to miss a week now. We got cameras on because he likes to get that mug out there for everybody to see. I see you shaved a little bit today. Yeah, I've tried to look a little more presentable. I've got the Grizzly Adams rough look going on. That's what I, that's I what, see. That is that's, that's what they like. Oh, you know, you got to give the people what they want, Chris. I know, I know, and that's what I'm here for—to give the people what they want. That's why Body Slam, the competition, is a numero uno with the podcast world. Mike, is that not right? That's right. That is right. So we're going to be doing a week in review show this week. Um, because we didn't have an interview this week. <laughs> but a week in review, uh, we're going to talk about what's happened on television this week with Raw, SmackDown, uh, NXT, Ring of Honor, and Lucha Underground. We also have a segment later we're going to be talking about uh, Blackjack Mulligan. He uh, passed away with us from us here just a couple of days ago. And Blackjack Mulligan was having some uh, health issues for a little while now, so... Uh, it was just his time to go, I guess, and it's sad to say we lost another legend, and they're they're dropping off like flies this year. It seems like between uh, this point uh, last year up to now, I think Mike, we've lost what four, five, four, people. five. I'm yeah. thinking I, I can off the off the top of my head: Dusty Rhodes, Roddy Piper, Manny Villalobos, Blackjack Mulligan. That's four right off the top of my head. I can think yeah. of. There's, I know there's got to be at least one or two more there that we're missing, probably. Yeah, there, you know, there's got to be. Um, but it's just people dropping like crazy, but we'll touch more on that in a little while. We're going to go over the shows from this week first, and we'll start with Monday Night Raw. Uh, Monday Night Raw starts off with Vince McMahon coming out, and basically he wants to come out and gloat and brag, which we kind of expected him to do. That's the usual bit. Talking about how he was glad to see he's seen his son getting the crap punched out of him by The Undertaker, and how a couple of times he kind of felt a moment there, especially seeing his grandkids out there watching that match and seeing Shane climb to, to the top of the cell and hell in the cell. And he's thinking, you know, don't do it. You know, it's foolish. Don't do it. But he, he had enough um, want and love for his future and uh, want to run raw that he would put his body on the line to make that move. And unfortunately, it didn't pay off for him. He missed. But he did it anyway. And um, he just kept, you know, Mike talking about how the, the the pay-per-view went and talked down to the crowd a little bit like he usually does, and Shane's music hits and comes out. And uh, Shane goes on to mention uh, he just wants to come out there and shake his hand face-to-face because he's a man. And, you know, to show that he lost, he's the, you were the better man, you lost, he shook his hand, he thanked the crowd. And he's about to leave, and what does McMahon do, Mike? He... Pulls a 180 on everybody. I don't know if his dementia is setting in or what, or if he forgot that The Undertaker won. But he says, nobody upstages me in the true Vince McMahon fashion and said, hands him the keys to Monday Night Raw and says, run it tonight. And it confused me to the core. Because we watched this spectacular match at WrestleMania between Shane and The Undertaker. And we had all the speculation, Chris. You know, you and I both thought, hey, Shane's going to bring somebody in. He's going to bring a ringer. He's going to have help. No. We didn't have that. We actually had a physical match between Shane McMahon and The Undertaker. And Shane McMahon jumps his silly ass off the top of that hell in a cell and crashes through that announcer's table. And the next day, he walks out on roll, you know, walking like Mick Foley. And... Mm -hmm. And then his dad, in a moment of senile delusion, gives him control of the show for the night. I actually thought that we had hit it right on the you know, hit the nail right on the head. Oh, when I did too. They, when they loosen the wall to the, to the cage, and now they're outside, I thought this is where it's going to happen. This mm -hmm. is where someone's going to come down and help Shane win this match. This is going to be the moment in the next few minutes. And I kept waiting for it and waiting for it, and it never came. I'm like, it never wow. happened. I was like, I thought for sure you would see like the lights go down or something, and then somebody would pop up and help. Like it would be like a, a sting coming in to do something to set up for next year's WrestleMania. All even though he announced he was retired, he said it wasn't forever. You know, that could mean an occasional match here and there, like Ric Flair likes to do sometimes. 
who knows? So, well, I thought maybe the lights would go down and somebody else would come up. I think you mentioned the possibility of Goldberg or something. Yeah, that I mean, was Goldberg was a name that was thrown around in the last six months of, you know, they wanted Goldberg to work with uh, WrestleMania 32. I mean, I personally, I would have been happy to see, like, Kurt Angle even. I mean, I'm a big that Kurt Angle something. fan. Because you know, could ruined. you imagine? Could you imagine? They would have blown the top off of that place had Kurt Angle come down. It yes. would have been nuts. They yes. would have been, they, they, they missed a golden opportunity there if they're going to bring Angle in. To do it, and like you said, like you were getting ready to say, we've heard the rumors, we've heard the whispers in the back. You know, oh man, Triple H is having lunch with Kurt Angle. Mm -hmm. Well, come on, Triple H, quit having lunch with Kurt Angle and get him on Raw. There's been those talks, and that would have been the ultimate way entrance for him to come in and screw the oh, Undertaker yeah. at oh, WrestleMania yeah. and get Shane control of the company over Vince. That would have been the ultimate, but that didn't happen. But Shane did take control of Raw that night and uh, go ahead and run the show. And I don't know if this is a, an actual uh, Shane McMahon show or if he took what he was given and made matches with what he had or how that was supposed to go. But uh, right pretty much after this all happens, you know, we find, I believe, the New Day came out next, didn't they? Because uh, um, believe. it does say here, I'm looking at something online just to refresh my memory here. Shane looks around and smirks, looks pumped about the decision, and all of a sudden we hear... Oh, Dallas! Don't, Don't you, you dare, dare be sour! Be sour. <laughs> exactly. Clap for your world famous two time champs. And feel the power. So we had the New Day come out and um, had their match. And I must say, it was not a bad match at all. No, it was sir. Not bad. Well, what was you know, the New Day is your thing. What did you think about them? Well, you know, I, I always enjoy the New Day. The New Day, to me, is probably the most entertaining thing on WWE right now. Right now. We're going to get into something a little bit later tonight, Chris, that has me very excited. That is going to rival the popularity of the New Day. And can see them as being a very big contender and maybe the thing to knock them down. But we're going to talk about the New Day right now. They just keep getting better. Their mic skills keep getting better. Their in-ring work keeps getting better. The crowd keeps getting behind them more and more. I just see this as it, it's just taken off. It's something that I believe started as a joke. Honestly, I think this whole gimmick started as a joke. It has snowballed into something magical. Yes, but this match, this match also saw us uh, lose Wade Barrett out of the League of Nations. And That's what I was about to bring up with you, the aftermath of the match. I mean, uh, the, the rumor is that Barrett was not going to re-sign with WWE, and this might be the exit for him going out. It uh, very well could be. I've heard the same rumor, Chris, and this would be a that, that would be a great exit, way to exit him out of, you know, the on-screen Roll, but still leave the door open. Maybe later, if he decides he's going to come back, take revenge upon you know his ex teammates in the right. League of Nations. It's kind of reminiscent of New Japan Wrestling when AJ Styles was leaving there to go to WWE. They had the Bullet Club mm -hmm. beat the snot out of him, and had the other guy go ahead and take over as the uh, new leader of the Bullet Club. And of course, now there's always room for that to expand when some of them come to WWE and more of them reach there. Uh, they've yet to come and have their first match. That I've noticed. I don't believe they have yet, have they? Uh, I didn't no, see them. I didn't see them Thursday some kind either. of dark match at a house show or yeah, something like that. I haven't read of any kind of matches, any kind that they've had here. But no, I haven't. Um, it's getting. It's gonna be getting close time to have that happen. And I'm thinking with AJ Styles having this match against Roman Reigns for the title, that might be the time to introduce them to for the screw job on Roman Reigns once it again be, and put AJ as yeah. champ because. If Seth Rollins is coming back like they say he is here very shortly, Seth Rollins and AJ Styles could be like the highlight of the year. In oh, wrestling. yeah. I mean, it, those two together in the ring is going to be like peanut butter and maple syrup. It's just going to go together so well, Chris, that you're just going to want to dip toast in it and keep on going. It, it, it's it's going to be something else. And I like the fact that uh, you know Roman come out there and he confronts the crowd and everybody, of course. You know, no one's giving him respect of any kind here lately. He, is, No matter what he does, he gets no crowd respect. 
So he yeah. may as well embrace it and run with it. And I think that's what they're finally doing. Because he comes out there and he's smiling at the crowd. And he's like, "What? What? Come on, I'm not a bad guy. I'm not a good guy. I'm the guy. You know what he needs to like making it believable. I'm the guy. And anybody want some of this pointing at his belt on his shoulder at the time? Bring your tail on down here." And that's where he made his largest mistake ever. Everybody wants to come down there at this point. You got yeah. Chris Jericho comes out. Uh, Kevin uh, Owens waddles uh, to the ring. Kevin Owens come, best he can comes to the ring. Uh, <laughs> what is his What is his deal right now? Is it like Cowboy Bob Orton's bad arm with the cast he had all those years? Does he have to I walk, have does he have to walk mean, this way in and out of the ring but move like a cat in the know. ring afterwards? I, I don't know. That's what I'm thinking. I mean, the poor guy, they got him coming down the entrance ramp. He's breathing like he's just run a 10K. Yeah. He's moving like he just like he just rode a horse clear from Arizona to Dallas. But he gets in the and, ring and he's like a ninja. He's all smooth yeah, yeah. and everything, y'all. Yeah. Ah. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. It's like he's he wears himself out coming down to the coming down to the ring and then it, you know and then he his, gets in and it's just sec- like bing, his bing, second bing, wind's bing. kicked in. <laughs> I'm just like yeah, oh. but yeah, we had yeah, what was it? Uh Owens uh, uh, Zahn. Sammy Zahn come out. Uh, AJ uh, and Jericho. AJ and Jericho. And they had a four-way uh, match set up for the end of the night for the main event. That would determine who would face Roman Reigns. Now, is that for the uh, uh, the next pay-per-view payback or something like that? I, I really didn't catch that. I do believe it is, though, but yes. Okay. But that is the number one contender would be the winner of, of that said match. Well, that's which was Which was looking great. Yeah, that's a great matchup right there. You got Sami Zayn, you got Kevin Owens, you got uh, AJ Styles, and then Grandpa Jer or Uncle Jericho is is in there too. Um, I'm not taking anything away from Chris Jericho, but I'm kind of annoyed with him, to be quite honest with you, um, Chris. And I, no offense to you, Mr. Jericho, if you're watching the podcast. I'm a great big fan of yours when you stick around. But, you know, you come in for a couple months and then you leave for, you know, 10 months and you come back for two months. It, it doesn't sit good in my, in my no, stomach. It doesn't. It, it's but, like The Rock coming once a year. You know, The Rock's entertaining and we all like The Rock when he's there for a full-time right. story. But right. it's not as fun when he comes in and pops himself in for a surprise nine-second match with Eric Rowan at WrestleMania. I mean, six. Six, six seconds. Six-second match, my bad. Now, speaking of Eric Rowan bringing up the Wyatt family, I'm confused. You and me Wyatt, both, brother. The Wyatt family on Sunday night were trying to beat and jump and beat up to one of the biggest baby faces in a while that the fans love and the rock, the people, the people's champ, you know? Yeah. And they've been all up over John Cena, which he's, you know, loved and hated both. They've tried to take out good guy Chris Jericho, good guy whoever, Daniel Bryan, whatever the case may be. Out of nowhere last night, or Monday night rather, they pop up and beat the stunt out of the League of Nations. Now, is this some kind of a... I haven't seen any uh, thing from them letting it to watch SmackDown. I got the highlights and stuff. I got to watch of the matches and you know, so have some notes of how the, the matches went, but is this some kind of a, a a retribution for the announcement they made at WrestleMania that no other three-man group can beat them in any way? Because they popped out of nowhere and beat them down hard. I'm not sure. I mean, the only thing that I can figure is is that in, they, they had two choices Monday night. They could either take on the Liga Nations, which, you know, was easy, was easy pickings for the Wyatt family, or they would have had to take on the New Day, which there is no way in God and God's green earth that they can touch the New Day because, you know, the New Day is the greatest thing going right now, so hot, so white hot, that, you know, you've got to wear a, a enough glove suit just to get next to them. The thing is, with the New Day, they put the Wyatts and the New Day together, you're going to be, you're going to turn around and hurt one of the two. You want to you want to try to build up the Wyatts somehow. They've, they've had them up. And they brought them back down. They've had them up again, and then up a that's little more. Then they smacked them back down. It's they're like, like the it's yo-yo like, of factions. That's, that's what WWE. I was gonna say. They're the WWE yo. That's what they are, a yo-yo. And they yeah. need to be more consistent with them. So it wouldn't make sense to put them out there to tear up the new day because they're so hot right now and they're still running on right. that popularity. It makes perfect sense at that point to have them come in. Do a little face turn if you want to call it a face turn, or just say they're being really themselves. Just say they're being that. themselves, and they didn't appreciate the comment that they made that no other three-man group 
can take them out because they're counting the one, two, three right here, and they took them out. That's how I they mean, should honestly, look at it. Honestly, Chris, I, I think it's time that the WWE maybe just gives up on the Wyatt family concept. Because like you said, they, they've kept them in purgatory for so long that we're not really sure what's going to happen. They come out and they're super dominant one day. Then at WrestleMania 32, they job Eric Rowan in a six-second match to The Rock. Yes. I mean, you, I mean, so now he just looks like, uh, you know, the, uh, an oversized version of the Pillsbury Doughboy because he just got the SmackDown laid on him in six seconds by a guy who hasn't wrestled, truly wrestled a match in Two God years. knows how long. Two, Two years. Because last year, he was at WrestleMania, he showed up for just a minute and did a little... little Thing with Ronda Rousey. No, Yeah, and he just exchanged a couple of punches with Triple H, and that was it. Right. That right. Was, that's the most, but, the most part. So, I mean, before that, I don't remember when it was, but it's been at least two years, we'll say. Yeah, and so so now that his credibility is gone, you know, uh, poor Luke Harper, he keeps getting hurt. Like, er, every five days, something happens to that poor guy. And then you've got Braun Strowman. I mean, the dude is massive. The dude is scary when he has a mask on. When he takes the mask off, yeah, not so much. Should have left the mask on him. That's much my opinion. Braun, I mean, buddy, you're a big guy. Please don't come to my house and beat the ever-loving hell out of me. But I'm just going to tell you how it is. You kind of got a baby face, even with the beard. You know, and if you shave the beard, it's going to be really bad. Some people just have that look. They do. They you mean can't, they you mean, can't escape the look. I mean, he just got that look. Look at all those you years know. Ricky Morton was wrestling. You know, Rock and Roll Express. Ricky Morton. He kept the same hairstyle whether he was a heel or a face. I mean, he the long blonde hair, the little spiked hair in the front bit. Uh, even when he was with the York Foundation, he was Richard Morton. You still, the fans were still want to cheer for him because he was still a babyface looking guy. And right. there's, you, some people, you just can't make a heel. That's all it comes down to it. And I'm not saying Braun Strowman can't be a heel. He can be a heel if he wants to. He's worked a little harder at it and make the look a little bit more better. But he could do it. And to have them against the New Day, who would match up against Braun Strowman? I don't think Big E matches up with him very well. Uh, I no. think you need someone who's a brute, who's a little bit vicious, or has that mean streak like a Sheamus does or like Rusev does, and have them come out there and face someone like him. You know, and Del totally, Rio, Del, totally Rio agree. Del Rio makes a better fit against um, uh, Wyatt himself. Oh yeah, and the rest of them. So I mean, I, I, I get that one. I totally so, agree. I hope I hope they make something good of it for the Wyatt family this time against the League of Nations. Me too. I really do, Chris. It, like I said, the only the only issue I really have with Braun Strowman being in the Wyatt family, being the scary heel, is that I know I look at him and I know he's the kind of person that my three year olds will smile and wave at. <laughs> he's gonna be like, because he's just got the he's just got the I mean he's got a kind face, yeah. you know. He's probably got kittens at home too that he probably pets. It's, now that would be something to have him a video with kittens, wouldn't it? That would be man. That would be the best. I mean, he, he was uh, a rosebud, you know. I know. They're, they're, I keep. I try to forget that. You, I, I'm not gonna let you forget that. I know. He I, was I a do. Rosebud. I do remember that though. Now after them. Further in the show, we move on. We got the the women's match. We got Summer Rae versus Sasha Banks, the boss. And I don't think Summer Rae has anywhere to go with this, but down. I mean, she yeah, I, she's better off sticking with the uh, manage somebody in her corner routine, and she is out there trying to wrestle with somebody. But she, she is getting a little better. I, I will give her that. I mean, she, she's getting a little bit better, Chris. Uh, but that's kind of like saying the prettiest pig in the in the sty. Well, you know, I used to say the same thing about uh, Nikki Bella, too, that she couldn't wrestle and she should not be out there, too. But then she surprised me by becoming a better wrestler than Brie Bella. So. Well, it's hard. It's, it's not too not too hard to be a better wrestler than your sister who just stops wrestling. That's true, too. That is true, too. Did you have any thoughts on the women's match? Anything you liked about it, didn't like? Um, I liked when it ended. <laughs> Does it? You know, the the if it was if it was somebody bigger versus Sasha yeah. Banks, uh, yeah. They, I mean, they really it was really a blow to Sasha Banks. I know it, it really was. You could have brought out uh, someone like um, uh, Tamina at least, uh, someone yeah. who's big or someone like who would wrestle better. Uh, who, who, what's the girl's name with Tamina? I can't ever think of the girl's um, name anymore. Um, I think she's. Married, I know who you're talking. I think about. she's married to one of the Usos or something. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
I, I always want to call her something that's that, that's not her name. She's a she was a funkadactyl. That's all I remember. Well, either way it Back goes. Brodus uh, Clay was still, you know, dancing his way to the ring and shaking yeah. his massive uh, prehistoric tail. They could have brought her out to wrestle. Uh, they could have brought Tamina out to wrestle. It could have been someone. Could have been Paige out there wrestling her. Yeah, I mean, what's you Paige know, doing? These days? She, she yeah. she's getting on hiatus well, or hand. something. I mean, she had that one match at the pre-show for WrestleMania. You know, and if she is working on her team, she's going to be out for a few weeks because it uh, takes Casper the Friendly Ghost quite a few weeks to get a little bit of tan on him. I'm telling you what. But Sasha Banks won that match by submission, believe it or not. <laughs> uh, Apollo Crews debuts on Raw, it says. You know, he's been a, a, a big solid person on NXT for a while now. And they got him straight out of the Indies not too long ago. He was a big name on the Indie circuit. Uh, different name than Apollo Crews at the time, and I can't think of it any longer. It was a little bit different style type name. Not a real name name, kind of like a, a label kind of name, it seemed like. But uh, Apollo Crews is on there, and he's wrestling uh, Tyler Breeze. And we talked about this a while back, if you remember. Before we started doing the videos, we were just doing the audio broadcast only. We said it won't take long before Tyler Breeze is pushed to the back again. All they could mm -hmm. do with him for the longest time was put him against Dolph Ziggler. That's mm -hmm. all they would do, him and Dolph Ziggler. They had good matches to begin with, but they had nobody else to put him up against, it felt like. Now he's out there, and he's at the back of the line again, and you've got Apollo Crews come in and beats him. What, what, what would be so wrong about having Tyler Breeze have a, a short feud with someone like Curtis Axel or Heath Slater you know, or Adam Rose, or someone like that there that they have. Um, uh, I mean, Bo Dallas even. I mean, although, I mean, I want Bo Dallas to do, to do well for himself. I hate this little appearance, the look he's got right now. I don't, I don't like it at all. It's uh, it's still the Bo Leave thing is out there. It's like he, yeah. hasn't, he hasn't escaped that Bo Leave bit at all. It's, he's still a joke. I mean, and let's he, just be honest. He could be better, though. He was better at NXT. I mean, he was, he was better when he first got to WWE main roster. But they just turned around and said, no, we can't have one like this. We're not doing no more of this Rey Mysterio stuff, you know, where the little guy beats the big guy. And then they turn around and put the U.S. belt on Callisto. So We're not going to talk about that. That's, that's just a, where they you know, say they're not going to do one thing, and they go back and do it anyway. I don't understand it, but they do. But anyway. Um, Rest in peace, Tyler Breeze. Yeah, it, it was a good career. The Ring of Honor is always waiting, though. They, Take your selfie stick and Honor, head, on, head on out to Ring of Honor. The Ring of Honor does appreciate good talent. And, they do. And they do. Tyler Breeze has the talent to to flow there real well. So, but you only you, you're you only get one hour a week there, so be prepared for that. So it looks like we get to the main event of the night, where they had the four way crowd, not four way crowd, the four way match. With AJ Styles, Chris Jericho, Kevin Owens, and Sami Zayn. Nope. But nope. Wait, oh, wait. 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 What happened? Oh, my God. Sami Zayn got jumped from behind by Kevin Owens in the back and slammed Big to the table, surprise. I think. He can't compete now. So now the odds are a little bit more in their favor because there's only going to be three people now. Fatal three way. Oh, no, 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 no. But oh. wait, there's more, Chris. Oh, there is more. Mike, would you like Did to tell you... us what the more was? The more was something that fans have been waiting for the Swiss Superman has returned. Cesaro, exactly. Come out there. Looked like he dressed in a business suit, not even ready to oh, wrestle. Yeah. yeah. And, and, we thought, just... and I thought for a second he's there just to make his presence known that, you know, I'm back, and whoever wins this match, I want to uh, fight the person for their, their chance at the belt. You know, and I thought that's right, what it was going right. to be, honestly. But he takes off the sunglasses. He kind of pops open the shirt a little bit. Next thing you know, he yanks this part off and grabs the shorts and pulls forward. And it's like a stripper outfit he had on or something, I guess. I don't know. Next thing you know, he's ready to wrestle. He's ready to rumble. He's headed to the ring. And I've been waiting for this for a long time myself. And I, I was wondering at WrestleMania when, when John Cena ran down to help The Rock out, would we see um, Cesaro in the next couple of weeks? And that answered that question right there. Mm -hmm. So I was, I was kind of thinking, to be honest with you, him making his appearance back, they, they might have been building up to Cesaro versus Roman Reigns. That would be a good matchup, too. Because that that be he's freakishly excellent. strong. Uh, they've wrestled each other before, I do believe. And the crowd's really behind Cesaro. And they are behind I Cesaro. Mean, but they're also behind AJ Styles, too. They, they Well, 
of course they're behind AJ Styles, Chris, but the outcome of this match, let's just go ahead and get it down that AJ Styles won. He is the number one contender. The outcome of this match surprised me completely because I didn't see it coming. I figured there was going to be some kind of controversial ending where we got somebody else come and then all of a sudden it all falls apart and we get a whole other number one contender later on. Yeah. Because AJ Styles, you know, is not a WWE made guy and usually they have to work a lot harder to get uh, the bone thrown to them, you know, so to speak. Because, you know, Roman Reigns, WWE made guy, come in, comes in, I'm not going to say he didn't put his time in. I mean, he did put some time in, but not as much as some of the guys that they've pulled in from the indies, like, I don't know, uh, Samoa Joe, who could have just been ushered straight to the main card. Honestly, he really could have. The, yeah. He's a great well, talent. I mean, Finn he's, Balor is the same been, way. Samoa well, Joe discussed. was main card for a while anyway, TNA, Ring of Honor. He's been oh, yeah. main card for a while. So, But a lot of people think about it, a lot of people don't look at NXT as being, you know, indie or anything. They're looking well, at the developmental. They look at NXT that's, as being a big card now. Well, that's what I was saying. You know, you got a lot of the talent there. We've discussed this before at NXT that don't want to go to the main card because mm-hmm. they see what happens. They've seen what's happened to, to Neville. They've seen what's happened to Tyler Breeze. They're ushered into the back. They're ushered into mid-card hell or, or worse. The guys that were big deals, you know? And see, this is why I've said before, and I know people are tired of me, tired of me beating this dead horse, and I'm sorry. I want some kind of extra belt. I don't care if it's a cruiserweight belt. I don't care Mm -hmm. if you bring in a TV title. We need one more belt because of the fact that you have a Neville, a Sami Zahn, a Cesaro, a Zack Ryder now, who I am upset about at the moment. We'll get on in just a minute. Uh, now, his appearance has been thrown out there as being someone who should be reckoned with now. You've still got your your social outcasts that can still be reputable in a TV title or a cruiserweight thing with Curtis mm-hmm. Axel and Heath Slater I agree. and I Adam totally Rose agree. And, all, and all. And I mean, come on. I mean, one more belt will not break that company and it won't make it watered down what it will do is it will give you some more competition for the fans to enjoy because now these guys who sit here and just fight for the sake of fighting well now they're fighting for something they're fighting to work their way up the ladder for that cruiserweight belt or that TV title belt and if it's a TV title belt it's got to be no matter, whichever belt it is I don't care which one it is it could be either one but it gets defended weekly Has well to I'll tell you what Chris, I'll one up you they don't need an extra belt they need another brand split I mean, I know it's been talked about and it's been rumored that they're going to head that direction, but that's what they need. They right. need because right. NXT on its on its own, a little hour show that they put on their WWE network has so much more wrestling content and has so much of a larger fan base following because the guys go out, they wrestle. The guys go out and there's there's more titles that they're competing for. You know, it's not just the same people on top. I mean, I'm a big New Day fan. Don't get me wrong. The New Day have been running with those titles for a long time right now. They haven't traded them off. They haven't really had a a good feud with anybody yet. But you got the guys over in NXT, man. They're they're always flopping belts around. Somebody's always chasing. There's always something good happening. Right. And if we had a brand split, we could have that again. We could have that again in the main roster. If you had another another set of, of world tag titles, if you had another another like you said, mid card title, whether it be a a TV title or a cruiserweight title or something like that. And I've heard rumors of the maybe bringing the cruiserweights back again or the light heavyweight, whatever they're going to call it. But you're right; they need something. They need they need something extra because. Right now, all that talent that you had that was hurt is starting to trickle back in. And the the card's getting built back up, the roster's getting built back up, and they need places to put these guys. And these guys don't deserve to come out and, and open the show and with the same two people for a month like they did with uh, Dolph Ziggler and Tyler Breeze when all they did was fight each other. Right. right now, and then, of course, a number of people, we talked about this before, 
on a podcast, a number of people uh, asked. I said, "Well, why would they said why would you keep adding more belts? You're going to water things down." They said, "You don't need more tag champions. You don't need another heavyweight champion for the other show. That's why they merged them to begin with. You don't need this and that. You got one heavyweight champion who resides over both shows." They said, "You got one U.S. champion, one Intercontinental champion, and one set of tag champions, and they reside over both shows." Well, you can't really do that. That defeats the purpose of a brand split, then, technically. Right. I mean, in, in a way it does, because, I mean, just like, you know, Ric Flair back in his day, he would travel to Portland, to Dallas, uh, to Florida, to Memphis, to other places. He would defend his title in other territories, and he would scout for people while he was there to come join their organization, too, while he was there. Uh, in this case, there's no scouting involved. It's just, you know, they're going from Raw to SmackDown, and that's it. So, I mean, do you really want to see one tag champion go between Monday Night Raw and SmackDown only and have Vaude Villains, uh, the Lucha Dragons, they're bringing in, they're bringing back in Primo and Epico, or whatever their name was. Primo was one of them, and I think Epico was yeah, the other one. Primo and Epico. They're, they're bringing them back in. They got a little vignette about them now on, on SmackDown, I believe. So they're coming back. Um, you got uh, uh, Enzo Amore and Big Cass. Oh, yes, we haven't discussed that one yet, No, Chris. we haven't yet. you still got the Dudleys, that's five. You get the mm-hmm. Usos, that's six. Mm-hmm. The New Day themselves. Did I say them, first of all? I no, you did That's you seven. The, them. Then you got the Social Outcasts. Social Those guys Outcasts could, can be a tag team. you got the League uh, of Nations League of can be a tag team. We're yeah. sitting on a possibility of nine different tag scenarios now. Yeah. And you still have like the those guys that nobody likes from NXT, the, uh, the ass extension. Well, the extension's are, still there. Yeah, they're they still can, floating around so, and kicking around. I mean, there's no reason why, if you're going to do a brand split, why you couldn't have two separate tags. And really and truly, if you want to have two separate heavyweight champions again, do it. It's a brand split. It's a SmackDown champion and a Raw champion. All right? I can see I can see even keeping the World Heavyweight Champion to reside over both and adding a SmackDown championship and a Raw championship. Those would be kind of like your TV titles you were talking about, but each show would have one. Now, that that depends on what they do roster-wise, though. Because, That's true. Because if you want to see what they do, because right now, the same roster is on both shows. That's why it's... Well, yeah, it's when, when we do a brand why, split, though. See, that's why that. they can do what we're saying. If they brand split, and they've only got certain people on certain shows, then you can't add too many belts. If you add too many belts, that's, that's where it becomes watered down at that point. Right. So let's say you go to SmackDown, you have your SmackDown tag champions, you have a world champion for SmackDown, and other than that, you can you have a choice. You can either move the U.S. or Intercontinental to SmackDown, or you can leave both of them on Raw, and you can add a cruiserweight title to, or, a, they... or, or a world TV title, like we said, to SmackDown to make an extra belt there for the people wrestling there. What if they move the women's division to one show? You know... Or do they need to have another women's title as I well, I wonder Chris? how long will it be before we see a women's show, period? How long will it take for that? A one-hour well, show. A one-hour show a week. If they keep pumping out talent like they have been, they could, they could almost do it now, Chris. The, the, that ladies' roster is so deep right now and is so good that and, and I'm excited for what we're going to see with this feud with Charlotte and Natty yeah that's going to be good I mean it's going to be it's going to be great and I'm really hoping that we get to see the anvil come in in his daughter's corner to kind of help counteract the that, nature bull that, that, that wouldn't be something that would be that great would be that would be and that would then be and then if you get um, uh, let's just say they go in and they move up um uh, uh, Bailey and mm-hmm. what's that girl's name? Oksana or Ox? Yeah, Oksa. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Oksa. Uh, Oksa. Oksa. All right, and you move them two up. All right, so you've got them. Now it really leaves you open space of bringing these other indie girls out there that are wanting to make their way up. I've been hearing Tessa Blanchard's name thrown out for uh, for um, for NXT here lately, uh, not by fans, but like rumors on um, on news reporting sites that it looks like Tessa Blanchard. Maybe packing her bags for Florida. Now that would be Ooh. something to see her move up, and they could. There's a couple more out there they'd love to see move up as well. They say, other than just her, that are pretty big names. I think one's called Havoc. Um, she kind of has a look that reminds you of a 
not quite like Luna Vachon, but kind of roughhouse like. Yeah, she um, was on TNA for a little while, and I do believe she had a little bit of a scandal, uh, if I remember correctly. I think her name is Jessica Havoc. I believe so. And I think she had a little bit of a scandal where she had some very racist tweets go out. Aww. So, yeah, something about a certain ethnicity and watermelon. I did not it, know that. It, yeah, it was a, it was a pretty big deal, Chris. I don't know that we'll see her in NXT unless uh, you uh, may not then. Because you know they, we can't forgive Hulk Hogan, so. Well, I was gonna say if you're not gonna forgive Hulk Hogan and bring him back, you cannot put her on the show either. For it's right. the same, it's the same reason. Right. It's just a different sex at that point. Um, right. What What about Gail Kim making a return to WWE possibly from leaving TNA? If TNA keeps going under like they are, losing people, you know, Bobby Roode's gone now. Eric, um, what's his name? Ethan Embry. Eric, Eric, Eric Embry. Eric something. Um, Eric Young. Eric Young. Thank you. Eric Young is gone with Bobby Roode now. And Bobby Roode was spotted in NXT's TakeOver crowd. So it's a possibility he's going to be there in NXT TakeOver soon. And, I mean, this is, I mean, all they're getting all the great talent now between the NXT and the main roster now. Now these now WWE is starting to make up for some of the things that they were hurting us on in the past because they had all these injuries, all these big stars, and no one to cover. And now this plethora of talent is coming through suddenly. And now you're like, man... We're going to have so many people on here to watch. It's going to be so entertaining that you can't get them all on a three-hour show even. Now, here comes the brand split again. This is why we had to do it. But, I don't know. They may or may not do it. Speaking of former NXT people, Baron Corbin was on Monday Night Raw against Dolph Ziggler. Um, Poor Dolph. Poor Dolph Ziggler. I'm just going to throw this out here. I feel bad for Dolph Ziggler, a former (laughs) world champion and now mid-card whipping boy. He's kind of the guy that's putting the new people over. And I don't know if it's because it's what he wants to do, he's chosen to do it, or he's being made to do it. He has made a reference publicly that he wants to be like Hacksaw Jim Duggan and Mick Foley. He wants to pursue a stand-up comedy career. That he always had a love for comedy, and that he had done some stand-up comedy before he got into wrestling, and he wanted to revisit that. So there's quite the possibility that he's writing out his contract, helping put over some of the talent, until he gets ready to leave and goes on to a new career, that could be That's possible. A possibility. Could be what he's doing. I don't really know. I for couldn't. Sure. I, I wouldn't blame you, Dolph. I wouldn't blame you at all. From clawing your way out of the Spirit Squad, and then now back into the mid card whipping boy status. He was in the Spirit Squad, wasn't he? He was, yes. But look at this was, way. Look at it like this: if he, if he leaves like he's doing now. Let's say he is truly going to give this a shot, and he goes out and he doesn't succeed with it. Um, He has left himself open by working well with the company and management. Oh, I agree. And doing what they want and putting over some talent that he would probably be welcomed back again. If not, and he doesn't want to pursue there, he could be a part of the other movement that goes to somewhere like, you know, Ring of Honor, where there's no real um, pressure, they say, on their people there. Um, and I imagine you're gonna see some more people joining Ring of Honor here soon that don't go to because NXT can't hire them all. You know, oh, WWE, no. WWE cannot hire everybody. There's just no no room for everybody. So you might see you know uh, Eric Young go to Ring of Honor and start challenging someone like uh, you know for the uh, for the heavyweight title there, Jay, uh, Jay Lethal. Uh, you might see. Air, um, Dolph Ziggler appear back there if his comedy routine doesn't work out. There may be some people leave WWE like Wade Barrett. Wade Barrett may go to the Ring of Honor and wrestle. He may try, and uh, uh, TNA may try a resurgence and might try to, you know, beg a bunch of people to come on there and wrestle for a promise of something. And you know, some may yeah. fall fall victim of that <laughs> and go there and try to build something up. <laughs> We got uh, a sack. We got we got you a sack lunch and a juice box. Come on down here and yeah. do an impact for I us. I mean, they they better talk. To, better be talking to Jeff Jarrett if anybody. If we're gonna talk to anybody else other than Ring of Honor, that's the only other one you're gonna have a reliable future with at the moment. Because right now TNA, they say is broke as a joke, and that uh, supposedly Dixie done got cut off by her daddy and he ain't paying for no more wrestling. So she can't find anybody to help invest in it so far either. So we don't know how that's going. Well, you but, know, um, it's like asking somebody to throw money at your burning uh, bonfire, Chris. Yeah. Now, but let's talk a little bit about uh, what we alluded to earlier in the show, a tag team to challenge 
My Boys A New Day. We saw it. We saw them debut on Raw this past week, Chris. The and trash, you know who I'm talking about. The trash talker Skywalker himself, Enzo Amore. And a bona fide thug and a certified G. <laughs> That's right. And you seven. can't teach that. And then you got the guy who is seven foot tall, and you can't teach that. Okay. You gotta love. Man, did you I mean, see they're that fun hairdo? to watch. They're did, fun to did watch. Did you see Enzo Amore's hairdo? Uh, it stands out. I don't know what stands out taller: his okay. hairdo or Big Cass. I'm telling you what. And he had, I, but they're they're extremely entertaining. I've, I watched them a lot on NXT, Chris. I'm extremely excited to see him. I think that. They're, I mean, obviously, they're going to be doing a feud with the Dudleys. I yeah. mean, that's pretty much... They, they, they called the Dudleys soft. I mean, oh, come they, on. They called them yeah. more than soft. I mean, Enzo oh, Amore yeah. told Bubba Ray Dudley that when he cried, tears rolled down the back of his head because his face was too ugly. I mean, he told... He he told... He told Devon, quit looking at him like that. He slapped him so hard, he put that lazy eye back to work. <laughs> I mean, he, he was all over them guys. <laughs> and then Cass was like... I get the feeling that you don't like what he's saying to you guys. So why don't y'all just come on down here and do something about it? <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, they're going to have yeah. something come up real big with them, too. I think that's going to be good. And, the, and you know, the Dudleys, are, that's all the Dudleys are there for, too. They're, I mean, yes, they're, they're old talent that's there, and they're there to put people over. A lot of people don't get this these days. They're like, they're, they're big Dudley fans from back in the day of ECW. I can't understand why you take a legendary team you know, like the like like three D and have them lose to these boys and everything. Well that's that's the business. You had your time in the spotlight. Now you help bring on the young guys and keep the tradition going. Although I would say, Chris, I would love to see the WWE do a do a run with, with Bubba Ray, a bully ray type run from T N A because he was really good at that. He was a really good heel singles competitor Really good world champion, if you ask me. Yeah. Um, probably one of the best world champions TNA had, along with Sting and Kurt Angle. But I would love to see the WWE do something like that. Give give, give Bubba Ray a chance to come out of that tag team uh, stereotype that he's you know been locked into all those years and back into now with the WWE, and give him a run at the championship. Well, you can't I mean, he really... doesn't... You, you he can't really pull an aces and eights bit, though. I mean, because that's you know that's no. what you've done. Only way you can do that successfully is if you bring in the guys who were in it, and it's not a secret that he's putting it together. The guys are you know the, the gang's all here. This is what we're going to do. That's the only way you could do that. Now, give him a chance at it would be great. But wh- how would you build him up? Would you build him up by himself, or would he have a group around him like aces and eights were? See, the Aces and H bits have been done, so I would build him himself. I would build him by himself. You know, Devon's always going to be there. Devon is, I mean, they're a team. I know that he went away in, during the TNA, you know, bit with Aces and Eights, but I think it needs to be a different animal, but similar. What if they played an angle like um, Devon finds out he just can't wrestle no more, but he's going to be in the corner of his brother Bubba Ray, and now they're going to. And since he's such a bully on his own, we're going to refer to him at this point forward as Bully Ray, if they can get that right to that name, I guess. It's probably right. taken by TNA. If not, they can stick with well, Bubba Ray. I'm, I'm sure at this point Dixie Carter would probably sell it off for, you know, a pack of Marlboros and a case Penny, of Mountain Dew. Pennies on the dollar. Pennies on the dollar, yeah. I'm, the I mean, dollar. I'm, sure, I'm sure Vince McMahon can, can, can wiggle some pocket change in front of her and get pretty much whatever he wanted. Yeah. Well, look, we got to hurry and get past here. we got so many more things to cover. we get to Raw. Let me just go ahead and zoom through the rest of Raw here. Uh, we did have, like I said, we had um, the winner of the Andre the Giant Battle Royale Tournament, uh, Battle Royale Tournament, Baron Corbin. He did fight Dolph Ziggler to a double countout, and then he left him laying in the floor afterwards on his way out because he wasn't excited about that double countout rule. Told the referee this was on him and laid him out. Uh, you had Zack Ryder... Had to lose Intercontinental title to the Miz because the Miz had Maurice come out there and she caused some uh, outside interference where he she's slapped uh, the writer's father or something in the crowd and he's out there trying to yell at her to get away and get snuck up behind and get that move put on him just to lose uh, the next day. Yeah, that's very disappointing, Chris. But I want to point out something: that Zack Ryder's dad 
is in phenomenal shape. He could probably tag with him if he wanted to. He could probably, yeah. I mean, I don't know why he just didn't reach out and, and, and slap the French right out of Maurice. Yeah, that just did not happen, though. Well, then they go ahead and they show, um, of course, the uh, thing about the vaude villains coming to SmackDown. They talk about that. They get a few highlights of, like, uh, things like from the, the Hall of Fame introduction in WrestleMania 32. Uh, Charlotte giving the belt, giving to her and stuff. There's a yeah, table. insulting the whole women's division. Here's the tables match we mentioned earlier where Enzo Amore and Cass came out, the Usos and the Dudleys. Uh, I'm really tired of seeing table matches. This Just because the Dudleys are, I mean, we have to have a table match every week or once a month even. But the Dudleys win that match, and then that's when Enzo and Big Cass come out and embarrass the Dudleys more or less. Uh, it was something to see. They are S-A-W-F-T soft. For sure. And in the Fatal 4-Way with a surprise of Cesaro coming back. And AJ winning that to get his first title shot at the heavyweight gold. That's pretty much how Raw ended right there with AJ celebrating the ring. Uh, moving on to the rest of the week here now. Uh, Mike, you said you didn't get to see it, but I watched Ring of Honor this week. And Ring of Honor was great, just like NXT has been putting on a show. Ring of Honor is still putting on a show. Anytime I watch it, I come out a happy person from a wrestling perspective. Seriously. It's happy Chris. I mean, happy Chris. Happy Chris. It's happy Chris. Um, the Red Dragons, Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish, they took on from the IWGP, uh, Ghetto and Okana, and I believe Okana is the IWGP champ, they said, uh, to a tag team match. Now, it was a very excellent match, tag team wise. Um, very athletic, uh, great tag moves, you know, when you got the, the double team moves together. But in the end, the Red Dragons, Kyle Riley and Bobby Fish did pull out the victory. Uh, if you get a chance to go back and watch this, Mike, during the week anyway, uh, or anybody else watching, I highly recommend watching Ring of Honor. Very entertaining, just like NXT. You get your feel of wrestling. And I say wrestling, not entertainment. You get wrestling. Uh, you Adam, call it wrestling. Wrestling. Wrestling afterwards. Is, well, I'm from down south. We call it wrestling down it's here. Wrestling, in the way. You know? um, Adam Cole, familiar name there. Adam Cole from the past took on Kushida. And uh, he, Kushida's also from IWGP, I believe. Um, great solos match they had there between the two. Uh, Adam Cole used to be part of a tag team and or a group, and he's showing here recently he can do well just on his own without their help. And we have uh, a nice finishing move I see from here. It looks like he's lifting the guy up for a suplex or maybe even a, a brain buster or something, but he goes down to one knee and drops the person's head and neck across his leg for a neck breaker Ooh. and pounces all over the pin. And that is an excellent move I've seen. Um, next match after they've showed some interviews from uh, Dim Boys, everybody likes. You know who Dim Boys are, don't you? Are you talking about the, the, the Briscoe Boys? Them Briscoe Boys. Everybody likes them Briscoe boys. They're coming for them tag titles, they said. It's been too long since they've had them tag titles. You don't know nothing about them boys until you have fought them boys. <laughs> According to... Uh, <laughs> them boys? <laughs> them boys. Because uh, <laughs> <laughs> the show ends with a great tag team match also. And um, Kazaria, the, the Addiction... Frankie Kazarian and Christopher Daniels versus the Machine Guns, Alex Shelley and Christopher Saban. Uh, these are four guys that TNA had in their hip pocket for the longest time and could not make as entertaining of a show as Ring of Honor did with that tag match, I don't think. I you know, it's, they it's were sad when you got all the pieces and you can't put it together, Chris. It's, right. it's, 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 like, trying, it's try, like trying to watch a blind guy with no fingers put together a jigsaw puzzle. Yeah, yeah, that's about about how it goes. We're gonna, you know, we're gonna go somewhere for that probably. <laughs> great, great, Mike. Now the blind guy with no hands will come on the show. Thank you. How's uh, it gonna work the Skype with no hands? It'd be like uh, they'll have, have a fake hand for him, like the guy from uh, Kingpin. Oh uh, no, the the we're the making fun of the scary movies, and the guy's like, "Take my hand, child." Take my good hand. You have to watch it. I'll tell you more about it later. 
scary movie, I believe is what it's called, the first scary movie. Uh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the uh, outcome of that match one, uh, was the uh, Machine Guns as the winners. Uh, great tag match, great show. Maybe the key here is one hour. NXT puts one hour out, we're happy. Ring of Honor puts out one hour out, we're happy. Maybe Raw should go one hour and SmackDown one hour. Maybe we'll be happy from that. Who knows? Uh, we would be, but I would say that uh, all of their uh, advertisers and all the uh, other stuff that they have to do to make all that money, Chris, to pay all those big contracts, they probably wouldn't be too happy about it because, I mean, honestly, we only get about an hour of wrestling. Well, that's if true, that, true. with the three hours that we have to watch, you know, the uh, multiple Reese's Cup commercials, the Snickers commercials with Charlotte and Ric Flair and the Zack Ryder and Dolph Ziggler and all these uh, be a good dad with Roman Reigns with his pinky in the air drinking tea. <laughs> I mean, and, and he wonders why he can't get over. Really? Uh, I'm a bad guy, but I like to drink the tea with my pinky in the ear. It'd be like having Val Venus on there doing a commercial for a Trojan. <laughs> Moving right along. <laughs> Moving right along, we have the NXT show this week, which was nothing really but a um, a show where they went over what happened in the NXT TakeOver results. It's a results show, more or less. They tell you so what happened... They Basically, talk about they the didn't want to overshadow Raw. I, so I they, don't know. I guess, I guess not. They didn't have any real matches except for one main event match, which was Apollo Crews and Elias uh, Elias Samson. That's his name. Um, and Apollo Crews won that match against Samson. But the rest of the, of the, the show was just about a, a follow-up of the matches they had from NXT TakeOver in case people didn't get to watch it. And that was it. Now, I'm just going to read this card off for this one, because neither you or I are either one watched it. We don't have a TV channel to watch this one on, unfortunately. And I tried to watch it online, and the video failed. And I just didn't have time to keep digging around for it. But Lucha Underground uh, basically starts off with a segment with Vampiro and uh, Dario. I'm going to say it's Cueto. I don't know. C-U-E-T-O? Cueto, possibly? Idea, but, 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 well, Vampiro is still wrestling? Vampiro the is there. He was doing announcing for a while. Now, I don't, I don't think he's actually wrestling exactly, but he's 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 involved, put it that way. I was going to say, that's a name I haven't heard since WCW. Yeah, and you know, this this uh, Cueto guy knows that Vampiro is Pentagon Jr.'s master and all this stuff they're talking about from all this storyline they got going on. I uh, I'm I'm I will admit ignorance to this. I don't get to watch it like I said, but I want to report the matches. For those that do get to who do like it and then get to see it at least, you'll know what matches they had and who won. Uh the first match was uh Ivelisse versus Cobra Moon with uh Ivelisse winning with the Desert Eagle it says. Second match was the crew and Joey Ryan uh versus the Mac uh Marty the Moth. Am I reading that correctly? Marty the Moth? I don't know. It's the Mothman. We got Mothman up here in West Virginia, you know. And Maripose. And then it says the winner was Joey Ryan and the crew with the code breaker. You know who Joey Ryan is, don't you? Hmm. Have you seen the video online where a guy reaches out and grabs the other guy in the junk and, like, he's squeezing, and the guy's like, oh! Then he reverses it. He's like, oh! <sighs> like that, and the guy holding the guy's junk is now hurting. It's like his junk is hurting him. And then he takes it one last time and does <gasps> like this, and the junk flips the guy over. Nah, I don't think I've seen that one. Well, you're not missing a whole lot. It's stupid as it can be. It, it, it's about, it sounds, it it's sounds just, like it. It's just as stupid as the independent thing I saw where they were doing the slow motion stuff. The guy supposedly could really do things in slow motion and create an invisible grenade. Go figure. He get, he gets the tag, the other guy comes in the ring, but the guy starts going... Like he's going for him. We're talking Baywatch, man. He's moving for him. And then he, he blocks the punch. <laughs> Everything's slow motion. And then he takes out and he tosses this grenade down and the other guy... The tag partner, the other guy, jumps in and jumps on the grenade. And when it explodes, the guy actually pushes himself up and flips over like he's really hurt. <laughs> Man, they, I don't know where they, why they think this is entertaining material, I don't know. Now, that was not on 
Lucha Underground. That was some kind of independent it, thing, it, all right? It, it, but um, that's what Joey Ryan did on the independent circuit, I think. That that was his thing there. And I think it wasn't, that's not very believable, <laughs> all right? I mean, come on. Um, last match, three matches. Once again, one-hour show. Three matches and some talking in between. Last match was the champion, Montaza, with Dario Cueto, I'm going to say again because I don't know his name, versus Phoenix. And the um, way well, it turns out, Phoenix is a masked guy. At the end of the, toward the end of the match there, um, it's getting out of hand, and the Dario guy from outside yells for him to, to yank the mask off of him. And uh, Mil Moritis and a couple other people come down there and jump in and toss Montaza, or Matanza over the rope and gets a DQ. He gets the win, still champion in the show, basically. So we can go away and go ahead now and abandon Lucha Underground. I'm sure the matches were fine. I hear a lot of their matches are well executed and high paced action, but you know, I just I, I didn't get a chance to actually watch it to enjoy it to say wanna, anything more about it. I, I want to try to dig us up a link somewhere, Chris, and if I can find a reliable source, I will share it with you. Yeah, well, we need to get into, into some of that as well. Uh, I'm gonna start watching this uh, Ring of Honor every week if I can because that, like I said, every, every time I've watched it, I've not been disappointed. Um, last show of the week we're going over here is SmackDown. Uh, we'll just go over quickly over the results because SmackDown usually is just a Monday Night Raw redo for the most part. Mm -hmm. Some yeah. things are a little bit different, but we did have on here uh, Styles coming out and confronting Roman Reigns, telling him that he's been all around the world, he's beaten uh, all of the best, he's been a world champion before, and he's going to be a world champion here, and if he is to beat the man to do it, and then that's what he's going to do. And that was their confrontation from there. Uh, the Vaude Villains debuted against the Lucha Dragons, and they won. They defeated them. Uh, Natalia defeated Summer Rae with Charlotte watching from ringside. Summer Rae just can't win. I know. She had no, no chance, man. Uh, the Miz, it says, defeats Ryder with Maurice once again interfering. Uh, that seems to be the key factor right now. She's done the same thing twice, and he's got the same move put on him twice for the loss. Well, maybe we'll start. Uh, maybe we'll see something at the next pay per view where you're going to have the Miz and Ryder maybe in a cage or something for the IC title. That would be all right. Or maybe they'll go old school and they'll have Maurice handcuffed to Ryder's father, where she can't go out there and do anything in the ring. Yeah, you know, she could can't, do that. Yeah, you know, something like that. Oh, or maybe um, it'll be a Maurice on a pole match. Maurice on a pole. <laughs> She's swinging around, dancing, or is she just standing up there. Um, oh, let, let your imagination run wild, Chris. Apollo Crews. Well, I didn't have any imagination for Maurice to begin with, really. She's yeah. she's, not, she's all that. Uh, Apollo Crews defeats Curtis Axel, and what they said was pretty much a squash match. It didn't last very long, which, once again, is a shame because now you're putting down the social outcast that much more from just Apollo Crews. Uh, Baron Corbin talks about Dolph Ziggler and what he done to him and everything. Emma comes out there and interrupts uh, Becky Lynch's uh, interview setting up a match. They have a vignette that appears on... Uh, Primo and Epico and their return to WWE. And Cesaro and AJ Styles defeat Kevin Owens and Y2J. Uh, and before it's over with, the Dudley boys run down to start beating people down. Uh, they're jumping on uh, AJ Styles and everything. And the way it ends up is Roman Reigns comes down there and him and AJ clear the ring and then have a stare down pretty much. And that was the show right there. That was the show. Ladies and, that, and gentlemen, Raw is like Sunday dinner at your granny's house. There's meatloaf, there's mashed potatoes, there's corn, there's green beans. Smackdown is like Wednesday afternoon at your granny's house. There's meatloaf sandwiches, <laughs> cold mashed potatoes, and old green beans. Yes, that's exactly it. Oh, what I miss about my granny's meatloaf sandwiches, let me tell you. Been a while. There's nothing like a meatloaf sandwich from Granny Chris. I know, I know. Now... That has been pretty much the week in review we have, but we do have something a little bit more. Uh, we were going to do this week a special segment uh, with a friend of ours named Jeff Teeters where he goes in and he picks out a wrestler of his choice and talks about them, but he's had some trouble with it. Um, I think what we're going to do is we're going to wait and hold off on that until next week when he gets a better, more time and a better chance at lighting. Uh, but what we are going to do is we're going to talk about Blackjack Mulligan. Uh, we touched on it earlier in the show, Mike, and Blackjack Mulligan passed away earlier this week. Uh, he's had numerous health issues over the years. Here recently, he's had blood clots. Um, you've seen times when the um, 
Bray Wyatt and Bo Dallas would leave shows and or they wouldn't be there for that week because they're at home with the family when this is or at the hospital with their grandfather and stuff's going on. Uh, but um, I'm not sure what the actual cause of death ended up being, whether it had been a heart attack that caught up with him eventually or the blood clot got him. But he has passed away, though, I believe, as of just uh, a few days ago. Uh, what we do have is a audio uh, file that we've compiled with a number of different people that are fans or people who have worked with them over the years. I've got one guy who booked him a few times uh, for matches and everything. They talk about him in their, in their terms, um, what they thought of him, um, sending out their condolences to the family and stuff like that. And Before I get to that actual file and play that, Mike, uh, what do you remember about Blackjack Mulligan growing up? Well, honestly, Chris, Blackjack Mulligan's career was pretty much on the waning side as I started watching professional wrestling. I don't have a whole lot of uh, memories of him now. You know, his sons, especially Barry Windham, I do remember a lot of uh, that. And, you know, growing up we watched uh, a lot of Mike Rotunda matches when he was Mike Rotunda and even, you know, IRS, Irwin R. Shyster. But um, my memories of, of, of Blackjack Mulligan as a wrestler are pretty vague. Well, I tell you, the thing that made him so big was that claw he used. He, I mean, everybody talk about, talks about the Von Erich claw. They talk about Baron Von Rasky and his then the claw. It, they don't stop to remember the huge hand. I mean, it's a, like a mitt that Blackjack Mulligan had that would cover a man's entire face and on his head and put that pressure down on him with his version of the claw. And it was just a sight to see how it would affect certain people that he would put it on. And he went on to tag team with Blackjack Lanza, as the tag team called, what else, the Blackjacks. Uh, they had a successful tag team run for a while there. Um, he had matches against Andre the Giant, which were just legendary. They were great. Um, he had uh, two great wrestling sons and Barry Windham and Kendall Windham a son-in-law and Mike Rotundo as you touched on uh, Mike Rotundo now has uh, kids in wrestling that are Blackjack Mulligan's grandkids so they're carrying the name and the tradition for the family on and that's uh, you know as we said Bray Wyatt and Bo Dallas and Rotundo's daughter is rumored to possibly getting into wrestling as well so that's another possibility uh, Blackjack uh, Mulligan to me growing up I remember seeing him I thought he was one of the biggest baddest guys there could be real tough looking at like he could be the entire defensive line for a football team and no one would mess with him you know and I'm talking old school football too I don't mean that sissy stuff they got out there today I mean the real football well there we go Chris we're going to have no modern NFL players on the show now you have done ostracized us from the NFL they are not going to come on and talk to us they'll be like he called me a sissy they're going to cry but you in know a what? multi-million dollar mansions. Let me just make it clear to them. They are NFL. They don't belong no more than Shaq did. Ooh. So, with me leaving it at that, let's go ahead and play this audio file, Mike. I know you didn't get to hear them because you weren't around at the time. You had to work, and I talked to these guys and uh, recorded these for them. And, uh, in no particular order, you'll hear names like uh, Steve Cox, um, Bobby Fulton, his son Dylan, who was uh, a little bit close to Blackjack Mulligan with some conversations over the last couple of years. Um, Herb uh, Williams, who had, uh, I'm sorry, Herb Simmons, who had uh, promoted him uh, a few times back when uh, Bruiser Brody was still around. Um, a few fans also, uh, from their perspective, as well as uh, David Besner, the American Giant on the independent circuit, talks about Blackjack Mulligan as well, his thoughts. And quite a few others. So uh, I don't want to give all the names away. You'll be able to hear them uh, yourself on here. Most of them announce themselves. Um, if you have a question on who one was that didn't, let me know and I'll tell you who it was. But uh, Mike, let's take a second here and pause and play this video for everybody to listen to. Hey, this is Bobby Fulton of the Fantastics. And I'm speaking about uh, the sad news of the uh, loss of Brad Jack Mulligan. I can remember him as a small boy growing up in Sylacate, Ohio, and watching wrestling on Channel 6, and back then in the studios, Brad Jack Mulligan had set the audience. Well, the bleachers, even the commentators said, this man's so big, mean, and tough. 
that the fans don't even want to sit close to him. And you can see him sitting in the middle of the bleachers as he was watching the matches that day. Well, his life went on and he wrestled all over the world in his career. One of the biggest, toughest men that ever walked uh, in the professional wrestling ring. Not only was he a great professional wrestler, but he was U.S. Marine also a former football player. But what really gets me is the last year or two of his life, the constant sharing of the Word of God in the hope, not in this life, but in the life to come, in his sharing of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's what I think most when I think of Black Jack Monaghan, what I miss, not only the men, but also his constant sharing and witnessing God's love to this world through the Internet. And that I'm ever thankful. And uh, I pray uh, God's blessings upon his family, entire family. I know Barry and Kendall. Of, of course, uh, Mike Rotundo and the rest of the uh, Wyndham family, Rotundo family, and, and so on and so forth. God bless them all during this tough time. But I will say this, that by his testimony, I know that his faith has ended in sight by seeing the Lord Jesus Christ. And that if he could come back, he wouldn't come back, but I'm sure he would say this, that you can know that you can come with me by following Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And with that being said, I think I've said enough, but uh, I just want to say what a special man we've lost, but he's no more suffering, no more pain. And the scripture tells us no more crying over there. And uh, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And that's where Black Jack Mulligan is this very evening. God bless. All right. Um, Black Jack Mulligan, he passed away yesterday, Thursday. It's very sad to hear and stuff. He was one of the greatest wrestlers of all time. He had a phenomenal tag team of Black Jack Lanza. They were the Black Jacks. He was a WWE Hall of Famer. Rick Flair, I uh, saw yesterday, he said that Black Jack Mulligan, if there was someone who deserved to be into a Hall of Fame, was Black Jack Mulligan. And that's the truth. Another other thing about Black Jack Mulligan, he was a great man, a great Christian. When my grandmother died last year, he contacted me several times, wanted to make sure I was okay. Although his health was down, his health was down for several years. Though he still loved people, he still was there for people. He remembered people. He talked to them, and he and he was kept to be a good Christian. A lot of people, when they're down and out, that's something they keep on to is being a Christian. And he was a he was a strong Christian. He put Bible verses up every day, which I love because I'm a Christian. And he's definitely going to be missed. He had some phenomenal matches with people, and that's all I have to say. Man, I tell you what, uh, Black Jack Morgan was uh, one tough hombre, especially when he uh, wrestled for the WWE. And one of the matches I really, really remember him was the six-man tag from Madison Square Garden back in 1980. Him and uh, Mr. Fuji and Mr. Saito versus Andre the Giant and Strongwell Brothers. And man, those two guys won a great, like two big two giants. But uh, I'm saddened to hear that Blackjack has passed. Um, my heart's and prayers and goes out to his family. Um, you know, I I pray for uh, comfort at this time. Blackjack, you will be always be missed. Even though I didn't meet you personally, you were one great, tough competitor. And uh, just uh, rest in peace, my brother, and uh, God bless you, man. And, uh, Take care of Wyndham family, and God bless you as well. And this is Fred Peggs. I was invited on the show by Chris Adams to say a few things about the one Mr. Black Jack Mulligan. Uh, what I remember about him most is he was believable. He was a legit badass. There was no doubt about that guy. <clears throat> Some of my favorite matches included him uh, with the with the great Bruiser Brody and Andre the Giant, Big John Stud. He was just a monster of a man, and he is and will always be a legend in the world of professional wrestling. I can't say enough good things about the guy and how how many people that he helped and pushed along his way. He was just a tremendous talent. 
and he will never be replaced, and he will always be remembered in our hearts and in our minds. Just uh, tremendous talent, God-given, and um, God bless the Black Jack and your family. We truly appreciated all your sacrifices. Yeah, this is uh, Herb Simmons uh, from the Southern Illinois Championship Wrestling, uh, wanting to send out our condolences to the uh, family of uh, uh, none other than uh, Black Jack Mulligan, uh, one of the uh, biggest men in the business, uh, not only uh, in uh, body size, but had a, a big heart. Um, I got it to meet him on uh, a few different occasions. Uh, mainly, I worked with uh, guys that I brought in that, that uh, worked their career with him, uh, like Bruiser Brody, Dick Murdoch guys like that that always just bragged about um, how gentle the giant he was in the ring, but how he could take care of business uh, both uh, inside and outside the uh, the ring. Uh, it's a shame. Um, he had a, a great career uh, and a lot of uh, great matches. Um, like I said, him and Brody had a, a several different feuds and several, several different territories that, uh, that filled out the arenas. So um, he's, he's truly going to be missed. Uh, so we just want to send out our condolences to his family, and uh, we know he's in a better place. Um, my thoughts on black on the late Black Jack Mulligan is um, he was a big man. He was an awesome force in wrestling. Like I can remember fir- very first seeing him, he was going against I forget who it was, but he just dominated that match, and he destroyed the opponent. And then he came out and gave a promo which was very good for a big guy like him and, you know, being Southern and just having that accent and just telling it like it was. And then um, I also can remember being a kid here in Iowa, which I didn't get to see very much of Black Jack Mulligan, but what I did see was that he was a really great wrestler and an awesome talker, and he meant business every time he got in the ring and got on the microphone. And I saw him one time when he was with the WWF back in the 80s. And he came down to Davenport, Iowa, and he was a real nice person, nice with the kids and with the fans, really easy to talk to. And, you know, he was just someone that, you know, showed everybody it's like, I can be big and I can be strong and I can kick butt and do it with grace and style. So that's my memories of Blackjack Mulligan. And to me, with him passing away, the wrestling world has lost one of the greatest right up there, like with Dusty Rose and Roddy Piper and Kurt Henning and all those great wrestlers. And he'll be sorely missed by myself and by the whole wrestling world. And that's my thoughts on Blackjack Mulligan. Yeah, I first met Blackjack actually through Kendall. When I first broke in, it was UWF with Bill Watts. And through the course of time, we're at UWF, NWA, Crockett bought us. And I actually uh, worked on a lot of cards and stuff like that with Barry, Barry Wyndham. And, uh, you know, through that, I, worked, I got to know Barry a little bit. Great guy, great kid, happy go lucky kind of guy. I like a lot of the boys. They're good people. Be real nice. You know, out of all the boys I met in the business, I only met one correct. And that's a different story. But anyway, I ended up uh, down in Dallas, WCCW, and Kendall came in, Kendall with him. And, you know, Kendall at the time was tall, lanky kid. Everybody actually thought he was pretty small, but, you know, he's a window, and he's like blackjack and that kind of a deal. So, you know, I, I wooed, I was, I was in Tulsa, and every time I go to Texas, you know, I bumped in with, with Kendall and room with him and ran the road with him, and he was actually dating uh, Boogie Woogie's daughter, and we had a good time running around. Anyway, we're building up uh, through the territory, the big uh, state fairgrounds uh, wrestle match there in the Cotton Bowl. And it was kind of neat. You know, just a sidebar, Fritz Monterey loved to watch Kendall Wyndham work. And uh, the reason for that was um, it were, he worked pretty much like David did, had the same look, the same movement. Same ring savvy, and you know David had a lot going on, and Kendall did, and you know, but Kendall was 240 pounds, 
but he looked skinny, but hell, he was 6'5", six, 6'6". Six, six. And uh, anyway, I was staying in the apartment. I actually had to sleep out in the living room because a uh, black guy came in. And you know, he's an old-time vet. Remember, like, because, you know, it's been a long time around Bill Watts, been around Fritz, you know, Geigel, and Ganya, you know, those guys. They don't really say a lot. And they really don't, you know. And uh, But uh, Black Jack came in to work at a couple shows leading up to our big show for the state fairgrounds. But, um, you know, just watching that old-style work, you know, in the day, you know, once you kind of get your style down, you really get a feel for the business. You know, I'd probably eat probably a thousand, eight hundred thousand matches deep, and hell, you did that almost in two years, two and a half years. But watching Blackjack work, and you know, I seen the thing where you know, um, the old guy with Larry, but it was a great opportunity to just kind of hang around Blackjack and listen to him and Kim talk quite a bit. We didn't really say much, but the opportunity to actually go out and watch an old school money making guy. Walt stop it. And you hear this a lot in the business. These kids don't have a fucking clue when they hear it. But, you know, uh, uh, making a little mean a lot, you know, instead of a lot, don't mean a little. And that's a lot of work today. They do a whole lot of shit, but it don't mean anything. And when black guys work, and it was kind of like Watson the same way, big guys, you know, when they really threw something or did a move, it had a lot of oomph to it. Because, you know, in our day, you know, uh, we worked real snug, everything was real tight. And it wasn't freaking ballet, and 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 you know, I actually had a kid upset. I ran a show, and he thought the guy catered him too hard. This and shit, I fired the guy. But anyway, Black Jack, great guy, loved his kids, and um, you know, just a tremendous. It was a very short time I had opportunity to say I actually worked on a car, but actually watched him go out and work. And he actually was working with Carrie at the time, Von Eric. Did the same old school. The friends came out and got on the microphone. That kind of a deal. But you know, it just they give the meaning to to you know they they really made everything count. And 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 you better make it count. You better sell it right way because you guys are real deal studs. You know, these guys today in New York are entertainers. You know, except maybe like Roman Reigns. You know, there's a guy with credentials. You know, Georgia Tech. You know, defense man. He's a badass. But most of the guys in the business today, across the board. They're not tough guys. You know, most of them are like 200 pounds. Blackjack was huge at the time. You know, he feel that a little older. You know, I don't know, he's about 6'5". You know, I think Barry and him, that's him, but, you know, just big, 290 pounds, 80 pounds. And they just, man, everything he did in the ring, everything he did doing an interview, uh, they're just amazing. And that's where I feel truly blessed. had an opportunity to be around those kind of gentlemen. It really, you know, when you talk about the old days, as, as I read about that, he is the old days. He is the thing that you miss. Those guys, you know, were old school tough guys. You know, everybody you meet coming out of that 60s, 70s, early 80s and stuff, you know, were real deal kind of guys. And, and, you know, by then, you know, Blackjack worked for, I never get this time, you know, for Vince's dad. You know, a lot of the older guys, and you've seen Sam Martino doing this, you really weren't too pleased with Vince and the way he's taking the business and that kind of scenario. And, but on the flip side, right, wrong, and indifference, you know, when you got a $17 million payout, like they did last week with Alice. But, you know, they just weren't pleased with the direction Ralphin was going, what Vince was doing. But, you know, I'm, I'm just proud to say I've had an opportunity to be able to sit at the table and listen to Blackjack talk to, to Kendall and, you know, so getting on Barry and, and um, you know, this one Barry was making his run as a poor horseman at the time. But, you know, a lot of respect for Kendall when people don't realize he was a hell of a worker. I mean, he was a hell of a worker. And, you know, he just, I don't, I don't really think he got the shot or truly the respect for the kind of work and work ethic and everything he had about the business, you know. It was a hell of a worker, too. And, uh, but, you know, looking at the whole family down with Rotundo and all the guys, the grandkids all up in New York and that kind of a deal. But, you know, this Black Jack, I, and I got to say, I'm proud to say I've been with Black Jack. I've been around Bergogna. Yeah, I've met Luke Best, Danny Hodge. I've been around all these guys. I've had an opportunity to just keep my mouth shut. And listen, young guys, you're around anybody that's got any fan of business, keep your mouth shut and listen. You may not pick up a damn thing, but on the flip side, you're going to pick up a lot of nuggets, 
you know, how to behave, act, the work a match, an old story, run a story. You know, it's just kind of neat to be around all those guys. And, and they're dying off, we're dying off. And um, so, but that's just my tribute to, to the Windows and who they are and what they're about. And, but, you know, they were old school badasses, him, Watts, San Martino, shit. All those guys, you know, uh, Snuka. I mean, all these guys were real badasses, you know. And uh, it wasn't sports entertainment, you know. Black Jack stomped the living shit out of you. I swear to God, Black, he can do it. And, um, but I love watching his work. And uh, an opportunity to be around those kind of guys. But hats off to him. He's in a better place. You know, most of the boys, they always laugh, you know. How can we all kind of turn pretty conservative and, and get very religious? And, and I always laugh from that era. People don't quite grasp. You know, the fans from today, you know, a little more upscale, but, you know, we always call them Jesus people, you know, because a lot of people want to save the great unwashed. I know the good Lord looks down upon us, especially old time guys. You know, they're light hearted, tough guys. You know, they just care of shit, walk in, wrong stomp it. On the flip side, we also entertain the great unwashed. We were the undertow of the people that uh, that Jesus would have hung out with too, and we actually entertained the people that Jesus loved the most. So, and you know, he's in a better place. He had a great long run. We're all going to die, and he lived a life for living. He gave life to some great kids. They're a great family and uh, wonderful people. And just that time, my little touch was Black Jack Mulligan. I was Steve. I really appreciate you putting in with us tonight and all this. So everybody, this is Steve Cox with us, giving his thoughts on Blackjack Mulligan and the, the Wyndham family. So yes, sir. it's been a pleasure talking to you again. It's like it was before, and really appreciate you jumping in with us and giving us your tribute to Blackjack Mulligan. Yes, sir. Thank oh, you. Thank you, man. Goodbye. Bye, bye. All right, everybody, and that was uh, some fans. I said fans, people who had worked with him before, people booked with him. Just getting their words out and their heartfelt sentiments to him and to the family of uh, what they thought about Blackjack Mulligan and how they remembered him as well. So that's pretty much all we have for this week. Uh, we will be back again next week for a week in review again, and we'll touch on some more things. We'll try to have that segment uh, with our good friend Jeff on here that he's doing a wrestler spotlight on. Uh, we'll leave it secret who it is until that time, but uh, I think you'll enjoy it no matter who it is. He's really great with his stuff. And uh, we may have a guest be on the show as well for a little bit, uh, working on a couple different names. Don't want to commit to one in particular just yet, because I'm not sure which one it'll be, but uh, we will find out soon. In the meantime, between now and then, don't forget to go to the website, check it out, http colon slash slash bodyslamthecompetition.com. Go to our website page, I'm sorry, go to our Facebook page, and uh, join us with us on Facebook in the Facebook group and the like page. And here on YouTube where the video is, make sure you thumbs up and like the video. Put a comment down there. If there's something we messed up on you'd like to see done better, please let us know. We need something. If we can improve in any way, let us know that. Uh, if you have something great you want to say, you thought it was good, you liked it, we appreciate all the comments. Um, hope to see you guys again next week. Mike, until that time, I will see you next week when we do the show again. Everybody else, keep loving wrestling. Mike, anything you get to say before we leave? New Day Rocks. New Day Rocks. You were about to jump into it a second ago when I cut you off. See? I, you did. You, you cut me off. I was going. I was doing the clap. I was going to, you know. I was going. But yeah, I'll refrain. Yeah. I'll refrain from doing the booty dance. But everybody, just keep on watching. Go to your indie shows. Watch the New Day. You won't be disappointed. Watch Ring of Honor. Evidently, it is a great show and watch NXT. Watch it all. If you can watch it all, watch it all. If you can't, watch the, watch what's great. Watch what you'll love. That's right. And like somebody I read said earlier today, don't take time to talk down on what you don't like. Take the time with us and talk about what you do like. That's what we're here for. Until then, like I said, Mike, we'll see you next week, guys. Next week. <laughs>